दी डायमंड सूत्र शेयरिंग द बुद्धा बीइंग विथ यू शेयरिंग द बुद्धा बीइंग विथ यू द मास्टर हैज टू गो ऑन लुकिंग इनटू द डिसाइपल्स बीइंग and the master has to respond to the inner need whether expressed or unexpressed and that is not the point maybe left alone the disciple will take months to find out the need or he may take even years or even lives but the master not only looks into your past or your present but into your future as well what is going to be your need tomorrow and the day after tomorrow this life or the next life the master provides for the entire journey this word therefore is related to implicit need in subhuti's inner being this word therefore is very significant it relates to the implicit needs deep within seeker and now the sutra because a bodhi sattva who gives a gift should not be supposed by a thing nor should he be supported anywhere his is the need for which buddha had used therefore subhuti listen well and attentively deep within subhuti must be having this idea a very subtle one if i give to people what i have attained great will be my merit such thought always comes to the people if i give to people what i have attained great will be my merit this may not have yet grown in word this may not have yet become a thought it may still be just a feel a ripple deep inside the seed has not yet sprouted but it is there buddha is seeing it if i give the dham as a gift to people and that is the greatest gift buddha had said once and indeed it is but when you are doing you are not giving the gift you are simply sharing a presence you are open the doors of the supermarket is open people can come and pick up all that they need the greatest gift is to give people your enlightenment to share it who am i to give i can just open my shop and share it with you it has to be the greatest somebody shares his money it is nothing even if he is not going to share the money will be left here when he dies somebody shares something else but to share enlightenment is to share eternity to share enlightenment is to share god to share enlightenment is to share the ultimate buddha calls this as the ultimate gift there is nothing precious than this nothing is more valuable than sharing your inner space sharing your enlightenment now he is saying to subhuti to share whatsoever you have attained and create a decision and this decision to share with whosoever comes 
is called Chittopad. Create a great decision in your being that you will not leave this shore unless you have liberated all the human beings. Make a great decisive act in your being before you start disappearing in the unknown oblivion, before your boat starts moving to the other shore, create a great desire to help people. That desire to help people will function as a chain with this shore. This is what all the bodhisattvas or the masters do before it is too late and they are caught in napping but this never happens. A Buddha is aware of the time of his departure. In fact, he chooses the hour of his birth and departure as well. But Subhuti is Bodhisattva before Buddha tells him to create Chittopan. Bring your whole energy to it, that I will not leave this shore, whatsoever be the temptation of the other shore. And there is a great temptation, when all has changed and you have become capable of moving to the other shore, for which you have been longing for many, many lives. The temptation is so great not to be here at all, not to be here at all. There is a great pull from the other shore for what? You have suffered enough and now you have the passport to enter into Nirvana. And Buddha says, hold on. And Buddha says, hold on. Deny the passport, throw it away and make a great decision that you will not leave this shore until you have liberated all the human beings. Listening to this, a subtle desire must have arisen in Subhuti's heart at the deepest subtratum of his being that that will be a great thing. How much merit I will get out of it? How much virtue does is that? That must have been a small ripple. It is even difficult for Subhuti to read it or decipher. It must have flashed as an intuitive flash just for a second or a split of a second, but it has been reflected in Buddha's mirror. Subhuti has the greatest support. The MRI scan of Buddha is there with him, but I have none. I have to look into, fulfill the two aspects, the Subhuti aspect of my being and the Buddha aspect of the being. So the Buddha aspect of the being keep on looking into the Subhuti aspect of it. Remember a master is a mirror. Whatsoever is in, in you is reflected in him. Sometimes he will not answer the question that you have asked because your question may be just a curiosity and has nothing to do with your inner being or your question may be just an exhibition of your knowledge or your question may be just to prove to others look what a great seeker I am I ask such beautiful questions the question may not be existential it may be just intellectual then the master is not going to respond to it. And sometimes the master will answer the unasked questions you have not asked yet. Also, you have never known this question ever existed in you. 
but it will relate to your innermost needs and the requirement. Buddha says, because a bodhisattva who gives a gift should not be supported by a thing, nor should he be supported anyway. The support means motive. The support implies that I will be getting something out of it. Then you have missed the whole point. Then it is a bargain and no more gift. Gift means you are sharing without a pre-thought. You have your pot is overflowing and you have left it for people to come and fill your empty vessels with this overflow. As much as your container can hold, you can pick up. Because this overflow is not going to end, it is unending. But then if you have a thought that I will be getting something out of it, then you have missed the whole point. Then it is a bargain and no more a gift. Remember, nirvana can only be a gift and never a bhagi. Enlightenment can only be a gift, not a bhagi. It is not business. You have to give it for the sheer joy of giving. You should not carry any motive to gain anything out of it. If you are carrying any motive to gain anything out of it, you cannot help anyone. The help comes when you share it just for the sake of sharing. Because your pot is overfull, the flower is full of fragrance and beauty, it cannot contain itself. It has no control over it. Unrestricted, the fragrance and the beauty overflows. If you are carrying any motive to gain anything out of it, you cannot help anyone. In fact, you yourself still need help. You are not liberated at see it. Liberation means you just go on sharing. And you do not have the passport for the other shore yet. You are bound to misguide because you cannot guide. The real gift is an overflow. Overflowing implies you are so full that you cannot contain the flow. You are so full of your enlightenment that it simply goes on overflowing. It is for anybody who is vulnerable and open to take. And you feel obliged when somebody takes it from you. And in doing so, he unburdens you. When a cloud showers on the earth, it feels thankful to the earth because the earth has received and absorbed. And in the process, the cloud is unburdened and the cloud feels obliged to the earth. Yes, it is exactly like that exactly like that. When enlightenment is arising, it goes on brimming, brimming up as well. You can go on sharing as much as you want and it goes on reaching to the surface again and again. And then again overflow continues. There is no end to it. You have reached the eternal, the unfathomable. Now you should not be a miser and you should not be motivated and you should not have any idea to get anything in return. Because a bodhisattva who gives a gift should not be supported by a thing nor should he be supported anywhere. The great being should give gift in such a way that he is not supported by the notion of a sign. He will not think this is a gift. 
and he will not think that I am the giver and you are the recipient. No, all these ideas and notions should be dropped. There is no giver, no gift, no recipient. Only all oneness exists. There is no subject and no object. Only there is a process that happens between the two. The one you are helping is also you. The one you are giving to is another form of you. It is as if you are giving with the left hand to the right hand. Indeed, it is as if you are giving with the left hand to the right hand. There is no need to feel great about it. If you take transfer something from one hand to the other, is there any greatness? When all is one, enlightenment means you have experienced the oneness. No difference between you and I. Left hand is giving to the right hand. Can there be any greatness into it? There is no giver and no receiver. And there is no gift either. It is simply a sharing from one hand to the other. The great being should give gift in such a way that he is not supported by the notion of a sign. And why? Because the heap of merit of that Bodhi being who unsupported gives a gift, it is not easy to measure. Now this is a problem you have to face again and again. The problem is your merit is great. If you do not think about it, if you think it disappears, if you desire it, you will never get it. If you don't desire it, go on showering on you. On the lower plane, Jesus' statement is right. That statement has been given to ordinary people. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. But Buddha is speaking to Subhuti and he is exactly saying and ask it shall not be given. Seek and you will not find. Knock and the door will turn into a china wall. They will never open. Jesus represents one estate. He is addressing to one set of people. And Buddha is addressing to Subhuti. And, the, and remember the difference comes from the audience. Jesus is talking to the common people while Buddha is talking to a very uncommon person. He is talking to Bodhisattva. He is talking to Subhuti. And the Lord continues. What do you think Subhuti? Can the Tathagat be seen by the position of his marks? Subhuti replied, No indeed, O Lord. And why? What has been taught by Tathagat as the position of marks that is truly a no position of no marks? The Lord said, Wherever there is a position of marks, there is fraud. Wherever there is no position of no mark, there is no fraud. Hence the Tathagat is to be seen from no mark as marks. These will look like puzzles to you. However, these are not in reality. But on those heights of consciousness from where Buddha is speaking, everything becomes contradictory and controversial. Contradiction becomes the only expression. One has to be paradoxical on those plenitudes of being. 
on those heights of consciousness one has to be paradoxical on those plenitudes of the being logic loses all its meaning at the plane of buddhas indeed logic loses all meanings at the plane of buddhas if one is still in system being logical and one cannot move on those plenitudes and one cannot express the truth to express truth is the greatest benediction and the most difficult thing one to express truth you have to be paradoxical people will consider you controversial that truth is bound to be contradictory it is always there is no consistency in it i may say i am very hungry 15 minutes afterwards i'll say i am no more hungry if you hold on to my statement 15 minutes before when i said i am very hungry and you say now that your statement is inconsistent you are lying to express truth is considered a lie that's why it's a greatest difficulty truth is expressed in a particular moment the moment changes the circumstance changes its expression to changes but the inquires subhuti is a tathagat to be seen by the position of his marks buddhist scriptures say that buddha has 32 marks of being a superman and those 32 marks are there to be the deciding factor for ordinary human beings it is okay because you do not have any other eyes you can see only the outward sign you live by the signs and the marks for the man like subhuti who can see in it who can see in the buddha those marks should be no more relevant and moreover to possess anything is not the quality of a buddha not even those 32 marks but they have no possession worldly or otherwise that is why buddha inquires about these 32 marks of buddha hood from subhuti they are irrelevant a buddha has to be utterly ordinary he possesses nothing and this ordinariness is his real mark not to possess anything not to possess even buddhahood that is the real mark of buddhahood this is how things become contradictory a real buddha is one who does not claim even to be a buddha remember all claims are fraudulent to claim is to be a fraud a buddha claims nothing he has no claim for anything he desires nothing he is not in any way interested in exhibiting he is not interested in convincing anyone about who he is he is utterly blissful and overflowing if anyone comes it is good and if no one comes it is good as well if anyone comes he shares his being his presence and his awareness as well and this sharing happens effortlessly you can partake of him you can join him in his dance you can share his celebration there is a great subtle celebration going on around him you can be a part of this eternal celebration 
but he is not there to prove anything. To prove anything only proves that you have not yet attained. He is not defensive. And those outer marks can be created by people who may not be Buddhas and only pretend to be. Anything can be created. For example, Buddha's breathing is utterly silent, as if he does not breathe at all. You listen to these talks. You will not find there is any break of the breathing system, as if that one long breath, and in that one single breath, the entire message of the day is poured, has overflowed. This is the outcome of inner happening. This is a spontaneous and this is effortless for Buddhas. I make no effort for the continuity of this single breath in which the entire message is communed. There is no break. Even when I pause, you cannot feel any gap in the breathing. You will feel as if I am not breathing as at all. Normally when you listen to the singer, one breath joins the other. It is evident. Here, the breathings are in a short intervals. There is no break. As if it has been interwoven in such a unique way that neither I feel nor do you feel. If you start flowing or following that breathing pattern, something will begin to change deep within you. That continuous, that is spontaneous, that effortless breathing pattern will become your pattern as well. This is his inner space, but what can be done by a yogi who is not a Buddha? You go on practicing to breathe. You can practice exercises and you can bring the breathing to an almost cessation. You can defeat even a Buddha, but in that case the innerness will not be illumined. I make no effort to extend anything. I make no effort to observe the breathing. It just happens. His breathing is slow because he has slowed down. There is no thought or conflict. Instead there is bliss, harmony and oneness within. The moment bliss, harmony is and oneness is within, the breathing will become harmonious. His breathing is the outcome of his innerness. He is not practicing any breathing exercises. His breathing is slow because he is not going anywhere. All desires have disappeared and there is no conflict of any kind. This is why his breathing is slow, almost invisible, almost inaudible. The reason is not that he is a great yogi. No, Buddha is not a great yogi. In Buddha all desires have vanished. There is no hurry. He is just on a morning walk. He is not going anywhere. He has no future, no worry, no hope. He is utterly devoid of any hope. Hence he is hopeless. Have you watched when you are worried 
your breathing becomes disturbed when you are angry your breathing becomes violent when you make love and passion arises your breathing becomes very disturbed almost like feverish in case of a buddha passion is no more and it has now become compassion his desires have disappeared as if yellow leaves have fallen from the tree all the green leaves have turned golden and not only turn golden but they have fallen from the tree in his breathing and his breathing has slowed down slowed down slowed down actions no more bind him for a buddha all actions are like dried leaves that are no more needed on the tree of consciousness but if this is the sign then any pretender can exhibit this sign but the sits utterly silent his posture is unmoving he remains in one posture even when he is sleeping he remains unmoving in one posture but this cannot be done by anybody just a little practice is but this can be done by anybody just a little practice is needed by that practice you will not become a buddha therefore buddha continues wherever there is a possession of marks there is fraud and these are the things that buddha is talking about as marks his breathing is silent so silent that you do not even feel that he is breathing he is not moving if someone claims i possess these marks of buddha look i am a buddha then there is a fraud because the very claim is the proof of fraud that is what buddha is saying in these sutras wherever there is no possession of no mark there is no fraud hence the tathagat is to be seen from no mark as mark why does buddha suddenly ask this question of subhuti a desire must have arisen in subhuti and these are the subtle things we see to be understood a desire must have arisen in subhuti is just on the verge of being a buddha a desire must have arisen soon i will possess those 32 marks soon i will be a buddha i will be proclaimed as buddha i will have those 32 marks buddha continues